Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering Sergey Lang's basic mathematics. We're on chapter nine now. Chapter nine has to do with operations on points and typically the topics in this chapter would be called vector uh, mathematics, just basic vectors and stuff like that. But here he, uh, he, kinda, he starts by, by changing an operating on points and we're gonna go over uh, some of the operations he comes up with and then eventually we'll find out that there's a graphical interpretation and this will relate all to vectors So the first section here is called dilations and reflections All right uh, The note here is he says we're going to deal with a fixed coordinate system meaning from now on We're not going to think about what happens if you were to change the coordinate system like if you have a point here and then you have another coordinate system here like how that points coordinates would change We're not going to think about that. We're going to keep the coordinate system fixed we're gonna move points, and we're gonna see how the numbers that describe those points change because the coordinate system is fixed, okay? And recall that the R is all real numbers. This is numbers like one, two, three, four, you square root of two, and the rationals. And then we have R2, which is all pairs of real numbers. And we discovered that this, uh, using our analytical geometry, are points in the plane. If given a coordinate system, R2 can be used to represent every point in the plane, okay? And every point in the plane has a number in the set of, you know, all real numbers. So it's all pairs of two real numbers. Okay, so let A be a point in the plane. So A is a point, and the coordinates of A are A1, and a2. So we have an x coordinate and a y coordinate. They're different values. The only relationship between these two points is that they have an a in the name. And the 1 and 2 are just sub indexes to help us distinguish the two variables. I think this is a concept that confuses a lot of people in algebra. They think there's some relationship beyond this. Unless there's an explicit relationship between these two points, these two numbers, there's no relationship. So we could ignore that. Now we take c is some real number. And then we define C A to be the point where we multiply each coordinate by the quantity C, right? So now why are we doing this? The answer is because we can. And the other answer is because we want to see what happens if we do this, right? So as an example, multiplying points by a real number, let's draw a little example here. So we're going to have a coordinate system here like this. And then we're going to have a equals 2 comma 5. And I'm not going to be precise at all. I'm just going to pick 2 comma 5 and say that's where 2 comma 5 is because that's where 2 is and that's where 5 is. Okay? I didn't measure it out or anything. I just eyeballed it. Okay? And then we're going to multiply by c, which is 6. So it's going to go to 12 and 30. So let's actually do this differently because this coordinate system is too big. Let's make it smaller. So we're going to have it like this. 2 comma 5 and then we're going to go to 12 comma 30 so c a because c equals 6 is going to be 12 comma 30 so that would be all the way out here at 12 and 30 would be somewhere up here so that point would move all the way up there to 12 comma 30 this is a and this is c a okay i this wasn't obviously big enough to do that all right, another example, a equals minus 3, 7. What if a is equal to minus 3, comma 7, and c is equal to negative 4? Then c a is equal to 12, because minus times a minus is a positive, minus 28, because minus times a positive is a negative. Okay, so let's draw what this would look like. So we have our coordinate axes here. And we're going to go minus 3, comma 7. So this is minus 3, comma 7. Let's do it smaller. Minus 3, comma 7 is there. And then we are going to multiply by minus 4. And we're going to get to 12, minus 28. So it's going to be like down here. Minus 28. Okay. So this is A. And this is C, A. A is at minus 3, comma 7. So what we've gone here is we've taken this distance here. And it's gone the same direction four times. Right? This one here, we've taken that distance, and now it's up there at uh, six times, right? So this is one, this is six times that, okay? That's basically what's happening when we are multiplying points by numbers. 
So if C is positive, right? So we have our coordinate axes here. Um, let's take A as one, two. So one comma two, okay? If C is positive, it's going to keep going out that direction. So we start here at one, let's say, let's say three comma six. Three comma six is gonna be out here. Let's say that's three. This is gonna be two and that's gonna be six. So what happens is this is dilated. It's kind of stretched out. Okay, so if C equals three, the points dilate away from the origin O. O is zero comma zero. That's where the two axes cross, okay? If C is one half, what do you expect to happen? Well, it's gonna to go to one half comma one, which is right there. Then the points, they contract towards O, okay? So we started here, let me draw this out. Let's use hot pink for what happens when C is three. This is C equals three. And let's use a different color. Let's use this lime green for when C is one half. Okay, that's kind of what happens. All right, and you can grab a sheet of graph paper and try this out for yourself. I'm sure there are several problems that cover this. I haven't really read the problems at this moment. All right, uh, then in this case where A equals one comma two, okay, R A is going to be equal to R comma two R. Okay, and that should be pretty obvious why that is, all right? All right, what if the point is not in the first quadrant, but in the second quadrant? Let's say the point is like over here. Well, if we multiply by twice that, then we're gonna take this one distance, and we take another distance, it's gonna end up here. So let's say that it was minus two comma three, it's gonna to go to minus four comma six, right? So it's gonna stretch out that way. So it, if it's in the second quadrant, it's gonna go there. And with a little bit of, uh, testing and experimentation, you'll see that all the points kind of do the same thing. They all stretch out away from the origin. That's the geometric interpretation of what's happening there. Not very complicated stuff, okay? So we can describe this. We say A is mapped to a point RA. This is getting back to what we talked about in chapter five. Remember we, we approached mappings as a topic from a very geometric intuitive approach. Now we're doing it from an analytic approach, right? And so this mapping, we're gonna call a dilation by factor R, okay? And if it's smaller, it's gonna get closer towards the origin. If it's bigger than one, if it's smaller than one, it's gonna get closer to the origin. If it's bigger than one, it's going to move away from the origin by that amount, okay? What if we have R equals minus one? Okay, so let's take, let's draw, grab a new piece of paper. Let's play, play around with that. So here's our coordinate axes. Let's take the point A equals one comma two. Okay, if we multiply by negative one, so R equals minus one, then RA is gonna be down here. Minus one comma minus two, right? So we've basically taken this and we've reflected it through the origin, okay? Now we call this negative one, we can say A times minus is equal to minus one times A. So that's just, you just take the minus of the coordinates, right? That's if A is equal to A1 comma A2, we'll call. Okay, so we write that as minus A. And this mapping where we take A and we map it to minus A, we are going to call the reflection through O, through O. Okay, all right. And uh, thus, if we were to consider the reflection using our mapping notation, we just say that's equal to minus A, algebra analytically. All right, so we have reflections, we have dilations, right? Uh, what if we do both at the same time, right? So let's do this. So we're gonna start at a equals one comma two. If we were to multiply by three a, we would take three of those distances, we would get a three a is equal to three comma six. What about minus a? Minus a is here. That's uh, minus 
1 comma minus 2. What about minus 3a? So let's take two more distances and minus 3a is going to be minus 3 minus 6. So we can do both dilation and we can do reflection at the same time. If we take a minus sign, we're doing a reflection and then we can take the dilation of that if, there's, if it's not by minus 1. All right, uh, let's talk about distances. Okay, recall that, well, let's just, let's just write out the proof here. So proof, or theorem one, let's call it theorem one. We're gonna say the distance from RA to RB is equal to R times the distance between A and B. So basically, if you take A and B and multiply them by some real number, so you're taking the dilation, the distance between A and B and these new points will be related such that by this factor R that you use to multiply the points. So the proof. Uh, so if you went to the previous chapter, uh, section eight, chapter eight, there was a problem that actually allowed you to prove this. Um, we're going to show you how simple that proof is supposed to be. So we say a is equal to a1 comma a2. I'm getting my commas mixed up. B is equal to b1 comma b2. All right. And so the distance from RA to RB is equal. Well, if we take the square of the distance, then that's going to be uh, RA1 minus RB1 squared plus RA2 minus RB2 squared. We're applying our distance formula here. Okay. Uh, then we can take these R's out. This is going to be R times A1 minus B1, right? So R times A1 minus B1 squared plus R times A2 minus B2 squared, all of that squared. So we can pull out the R's. We get R squared times A1 minus B1 plus R squared times A2 minus B2 squared. I forgot the square sign there. And so we can factor out this R squared and we get A1 uh, minus B1 squared plus A2 minus B2 squared, right? And this you should recognize as the distance from A1 to A, so the distance from A to B squared, right? So we have proven that the distance between these two is the same. This distance is equal to that right there. There's actually a block there because we're pulling the R squared out from both terms. All right, that is the proof. It's rather simple. Um, what if we multiply by a negative number? Okay, so what if R is negative, right? <clears throat> so, if we were to write out this, this is the absolute value of C. This is equal to the square root of C squared. It's a very simple formula that you can memorize. Okay. The distance between these two points, so the distance between um, CA and CB is actually equal to the absolute value of C times the distance between A and B. So this one, we had to assume that R is greater than zero, right? I could, it could also be zero. You could figure out why. But if it's negative, this doesn't work, right? Well, it does actually because you'd be squaring it. But anyway, the proof is pretty much the same as before. Uh, the difference is that you'll note that you have an R squared. Um, so if you take C squared, it's always going to be positive, and so blah, blah, blah. It should be pretty easy to prove. Exercises. Uh, these are relatively straightforward exercises. You're just going to take points, you multiply them, draw them out. Um, number two is a proof, uh, saying that if BA is equal to CA, then B must be equal to C. Problem three. Uh, is to show that reflection preserves distances. So all you have to do for problem th three is show that the distance between points A and B is equal to the points, the distance between the points minus A and minus B, or negative A and negative B. 
And problem four is a three-dimensional case, which is pretty trivial. It's not hard at all. Okay, thank you for studying with me. Uh, we will continue this in the next section. Take care and bye-bye. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is part of a series on Sergey Lang's basic mathematics. You can catch the playlist over here and you can find out how to support my channel over here. Thanks so much, have a great day, bye-bye.